Hello guys, so do you want to have full control over your flip simulations? Then you came to the right place. Stay tuned and enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so first of all, let's grab a geometry and let's create a sphere. This sphere will be placed right above this value 16 because I want uh, the liquid to fall from this ball, from this sphere. And since I don't like animating, I will create a scene function that moves each frame multiplied, each frame multiplied by eight. Same on the C axis, and uh, it will do this kind of movement. Okay, so this is great. And now what I'm going to do is to create a point from volume. The point from volume will create points, in this case, each frame. You could also, instead of creating the sphere and moving the sphere, you can obviously just create a transform and move the transform with the scene of function we created here. This will be useful because we will be able to create the points before the movement you see so now the points are getting moved not created each frame so these are two different approach i am going to go for the later but let's why because i can grab a trail node and if i want to use the trail of course use the velocity okay so now we could create, for example, a randomized attributes. And let's say we want the viscosity. We will have the viscosity set to a volume of one, of our one dimension. And we will also create another value that goes for the density. We have these two values, viscosity and we have density. We can drive the simulation with these two values. Okay, so we can also, because these values are minuscule, we, we could also multiply those. So density uh, multiply or equal to uh, to I know uh, CHF uh, density, and the same will go for the viscosity discuss it if we plug this and we change this for viscosity we will have the same values as before but we can of course move them like so see and we have way more viscosity than density and or the opposite so i'm going to leave these attributes only to show you something so let's make a dot network with a network of a flip simulation, flip solver, consists in this. First of all, plug in the flip solver, then the flip objects. You will see, if you go to frame zero, that you will have this cube with something here. Obviously, we do not want this. So we're going to do the following and on guides. We're going to go to particles and visualize particles. So far, we're not seeing anything, but we can start seeing this with a pop source, a pop source and use, for instance, what we already have around here on the first input. So let's grab the first input, the first context and see what happens. Basically, nothing at all. Why? Because we need to scatter on all the points. Let's see again. It's something is getting created, you see? And the velocity is actually displacing the points. We need some um, gravity. We need a ground. And we also need a merge. To merge these two. We will eventually need another another object to collide so we are going to plug in a static object 
still we don't have anything so it doesn't matter and we will perhaps make a force a pop force you can move your actually your, your points with pop forces so let's see how this looks see this looks actually nice it's basically water nothing else and you will ask where are the density where is the density or the viscosity well you get to go to first of all uh, use H particles then you should go to viscosity enable viscosity by attributes on and same with the density now let's see what happens instantly you see some kind of drag obviously the numbers are not that huge but look at this okay so this is actually working but this is not the result I want because this is static I do not want static stuff but I'm going to create before changing this because we will be overriding these bodies and we'll create a collider so let's grab a tube we can see the tube around here on the c-axis let's make it longer like so this is okay I guess we will end caps we will merge it to another tube that will be placed on the other side like so and let's see now we have two we will match dice to place it in the middle we will merge it to another node that is called transform we will rotate this 90 degrees and this is how it looks we can obviously just move this around and the match size will do the following pretty good right so now we just need to convert this to a bdb for the collider uh, it, we don't need to change this information this is actually okay i am going to move them a little bit closer i think this is fine so let's transform this before and move it, I don't know, to, to number 8. Now this, this null is the out hole from out collider. What am going on? Let's fill this. This is okay. It doesn't matter. And let's open this static object and grab the soft solver and grab the out collider. Let's go to volume collisions. Let's plug in the proxy volume and instead of max axis, we're going to use volume sample here. Okay, this should be it. Let's see how it looks. So now the water or the or the slime is falling down. Okay, this should be way smaller. So let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. This is fine. I'm going to lower the radius a little bit here. Here, the radius goes here and here. So we got the two smaller. Okay, let's go inside the top network again. So you can see this is colliding quite good. Some of the particles are sticking. So I like this. Uh, I like this behavior. But still, it's all the same. Like I, I don't see much, or I don't see the fun in this. So we can use. A multi solver here this is where things will get a little bit tricky so just stay with me and we can use a sub solver the sub solver will get every point we are using here and we are going to modificate or uh, change the inner value so we are going to be basically overriding this stuff I will do some more things like add some surface tension and surface blur just so it sticks all together because it as you can see it will create this kind of uh, of rainy drop shape you will see when we get uh, a better viscosity settings okay so let's go in case we will use a wrangle this wrangle will be placed to this so we already know that we 
if we simulate, we're driving some attributes, like for example, hey, for example, density, viscosity, or rage. Okay, so if we go and say here we can create a wrangle node, we can hop in and create again the vis the viscosity. Like so will be equal to one. So now some some values that we can see here are for example the H, the density and the viscosity. I just wrote them here to filter them. So here we are overriding viscosity by one, as you can tell. But what could happen if we use the H to drive our simulation? So let's go back and grab a CH ramp. Let's call this viscosity and let's drive this by a fit function that goes from H and this, this is what's being driven by. Maybe our minimum values will be zero and maximum two. And you want this to go from 0.3 to 1. So this is perfect. It, we are going to have viscosity driven by this volume. If we simulate again, we will actually see it. So let's simulate to frame 24. As you can see, if we place this with this button, we will see the viscosity getting uh, ramped through these values. But we want more values, so we're going to create one last uh, attribute or a multiplication constant that will be called mult viscosity. So we're going to drive this and create our node based on this. Uh, we can have a really nice distribution. In this case, I just want to have a couple of a couple of numbers going from 0 or maybe 30 to 900 so we will see how this goes so when timing goes by this will solidify as you can see this is already getting really really thick and it's like glue so this is really nice we can obviously grab our values and multiplicate this uh, by, for example, the density. This will be called density, and it will also be called density. So now we have these are two values. Multiplication density will be equal to, to 300, and this will be equal to 100. We can ramp as we wished here, and let's see how this looks. So everything is going as expected. The values are getting solidified. We can grab this here and place the density and the viscosity. And we will see how these values rise over time. But I want more. In this case, we're going to change this, or actually this will be called H, and we will make another wrangle so we're going to raise another wrangle. In this case, we are going to call this div because that's what we're going to create. A ramp based on the speed. So how do we do that? First of all, copy and paste the previous code, make a float called speed. This will be the length of our previous velocity. Now, here we will want to use speed as our driving factor. And uh, maybe if we change some values like so, uh, we will create a ramp that gets multiplied obviously by our uh, CHF. So, we know that if we want uh, we know that if we are going slow, we want more viscosity. So let's create a ramp similar to this. It doesn't have to be exact, exactly the same. You can have fun with it. So now we can have a 400 and I don't know, 100, 1 or 1200. 
here. So let's see what happens. If we go back and click here on flip object and then geometry, we can see the values in real time. As you can tell, we already had some values that were slowing down. Just have a look as soon as these slow down a tiny bit, we will have these particles being created or being shaped as as density or as, as a high viscosity attribute. Maybe we need a tiny bit more. So instead of, oh, I had density to zero. So we can plug this to to hydrogen and let's, let's be extremely huge with these values and let's see what happens. So have a look. Everything is getting really, really strong here. As you can see, the explosions don't last that much, but we could improve this by adding like an offset, like a minimum density. So a way to do this is to actually, uh, first of all, move this to the right a tiny bit. So now, we will have that every particle from frame one, if we move this a tiny bit to the right, we, we will create more density. See how the values are changing? This is what we want. So let's have another look. Zero this time. And as you can tell, we already are having some nice viscosity. See, now this is more viscous. And as a final driving factor, we can, of course, add an offset. See, Chef? Offset. I'm going to copy and paste this here too. And go back here and maybe grab 100 and offset. So every frame we will have at least 100 points of offset. In this case, we will have a plus. See? Density and viscosity starts at 100. And obviously, they will slow down as they lose velocity. As you can tell, this is actually working and it's quite nice. So look how these are getting really solid, really solid. This is actually a really nice simulation. It's getting a better shape. This is really solid, but as soon as I will show you, as soon as it starts falling down, we can tell that the density starts going back up, back down again. So we're going to visualize this so let's grab a color in this color we are going to use ramp from attributes we will use viscosity and we will go from zero oh we will go to 100 to let's say 5000 so what's actually red will be like 100 and what's white will be 5,000. We will only wrap the flip object to have the particles and we will see this amazing simulation. It's actually quite nice, you know. So this is how it looks with the color. And if we do a flip source, I mean, if we do a, a surface, surface simulation, we can grab here this. We can grab this also plug this together copying the separation well the separation will be equal to our object here the particle separation we'll go back and plug this in here with a relative reference basically that's it we can filter this as we want i will use the filtering 
and the smoothing set to Gaussian or mean value it's actually okay for this uh, result this is actually okay on regions we can subtract the collisions see how this changes and well we are ready to go we will merge these two. Oh, I missed one more thing that we will um, surfacing we will actually export everything see if we plug these two together we can see that it works flawlessly I will create a playbook and show you guys how it looks so let's have a look and I think that the behavior of this is actually really nice look how this is really liquid like but as soon as it collides and loses velocity it starts like sticking to the surface and clamping down here hello again guys if you enjoyed the tutorial please leave a like and join our community link down below you can follow me on discord on youtube and you can also join our twitch where i sometimes stream so stay tuned until next time Oh, 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 oh,